Lord. Amen. So praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and connect with our families as we begin to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and just appreciate you for just allowing us to be uh, on this on this call tonight, I mean, on this Zoom meeting tonight, we thank you, God, for how you continue to watch over us, God, and uh, and have you how you how you have kept us and encouraged us and inspired us to be on here to grow and to learn, oh God, of your word in your word, God. We pray, God, for everyone that is on this on this Zoom, God. We pray that you will supernaturally speak to our hearts, God. Open up revelation to us that we will. Uh, grow in our understanding, God. Remember the teachers tonight, God, and bless them in a special way, God. Hallelujah. And that you be glorified in all things, God. And we just thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Oh, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so um, at this time, you know, I get to turn this over to my my beautiful. See, this is the only other lady I can really call beautiful and not get in trouble. This is my lovely, beautiful, anointed singing sister and minister, right? So, uh, <laughs> Amen. Let's go ahead and greet her with a with a with an emoji hand clap, a thumbs up, something. You know, we, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna pump all of you up because I I love God's people. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor over at this time. Praise the Lord, Sister Benel. All right. Can you uh, make me host? Yes, I certainly can. You're going to have to let people in the room if they come in. Okay. Okay. Oh, All man. right. There it is. Okay. All right. So uh, we decided to team up. So I'll do the first part and Michael will do the second part because we're working on marriage workshops so we're still praying about it nothing is set in stone but we would like to eventually do marriage workshops um if anyone knows our story you know we have one but um that's in the future god willing <laughs> so i feel like that's something that you know will be helpful to people and just something we're praying about so keep us in prayer about that <laughs> All right, so um, we are covering breastplate of righteousness, which can be found in Ephesians 6.14. Sorry, it's the teacher in me. I always have to have an agenda for my sake, so don't mind me. I'm not trying to be formal or anything. All right, so we're going to start off with the history and function of the breastplate. Um, why do we need it? The heart attack of the spear, essentially putting on Christ. And then we'll have a quiz on Kahoot. Teacher friends know about Kahoot. Um, the winner will receive a gift card if there is a tie. We will use a question from my lovely Bible trivia book to break the tie. It will be an Amazon gift card. So we'll do the quiz at the very end. All right. So Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. It was the second piece of armor. Um, the breastplate was used for the soldiers as a piece of armor to cover their chest, um, a device worn over the torso used for protection against injury. It protected vital organs such as the heart and lungs. So, of course, that's very important to protect because you need all your soldiers alive. So that's a really important uh, piece to have because those are vital organs. Um, when we look at the word righteousness, that means the quality or state of being morally correct or justifiable. The breastplate represents a holy character and moral conduct. So if we're going to put on this breastplate of righteousness. We should be putting on the attributes of God. God is holy. God is moral. God is right. God is justifiable. So we need to make sure we're always putting on that armor, that breastplate of righteousness representing God and his holy attributes or traits. Um, it is imperative to suit up every day. Why? So if we want to be protected from the darts of the enemy, we have to suit up daily. The problem happening is people are giving into the pressures of the world because they refuse to suit up. The pressures to conform, but the word says to be transformed. So this is going to kind of be kind of interactive. I want you to put in the chat box something that people in the world are conforming to. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Just jot something in the chat box. What are some things that people in the world are conforming to? 
because they're not suiting up the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, we have hip hop, absolutely. Music is a big thing that even saints struggle with. Music, yes. False narratives, absolutely. Looks, social media, absolutely. R&B, social media pressure, yes. That's a big thing with teenagers. You wanna fit in watching those TikTok videos or the Instagram, you see all these teenagers who look a certain way, so you wanna fit in. Culture, yes. Cardi, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Lies others tell about ourselves, absolutely. And hip hop again. Absolutely. So all of those are definitely pressures that not only teenagers face, but adults face those as well. But the word says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we have to make sure we're suiting up so we're not conforming to the world. Um, we also need to remember that enemy's job is to trick and manipulate us. Therefore, we must have on this armor. It will help us to be sober and vigilant of his devices, lest Satan should have an advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That's found in 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. So we are sober and we are vigilant. We're watchful. We know when the devil's trying to tempt us or trying to trick us because we, we're alert. We're sober-minded. So we'll be able to recognize that attack or that um, temptation like, mm -mm, this is straight from the devil. I rebuke it. He's trying to trick me. This is just another trick from the enemy. I need to be alert. So you can just come back with the word. I rebuke you saying in the name of Jesus, you will not have power over my mind, over my heart. You just have to just quote those words over your life when you feel um, temptation. The next slide says carnal minded people are susceptible to the enemy's devices. Let's not give him an advantage. So susceptible, another word for that is influenced to the enemy's devices. Carnal-minded, what comes to your mind when you hear carnal-minded? Go ahead and put it in the chat for me. What comes to your mind when you hear the word carnal-minded? No normal for families. Yep. Messiness, not spiritual. Flesh. Yep. Being led by the flesh, not the spirit. Simple thoughts. Absolutely. Still see a few more coming through. Sin. Yep. Self desires. Confusion. Yes. Craziness. It's like all, right. All of those are forms of carnality. So if you are carnal, you're going to be easily influenced to the enemy's devices. You're going to fall very easily for his devices because you are carnal minded. You're thinking carnal. You're not being spiritually minded. To be carnally minded is death. So we need to make sure we are being led by the spirit and not by our flesh, or we're going to always fall to the enemy's devices. We're going to always be tricked into his devices because we're so easily influenced. Um, the next part says, let's not forget the devil's mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. At the end of the day, that's the devil's mission, to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And he's going to do whatever it takes to do that, steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy goes after everyone. Just because we're saved doesn't exempt us from attacks. Mm -hmm. And I think that may be a big one when people first get saved. They may think, oh, everything's going to be all peaches and cream. No. The attacks are really about to start. <laughs> the enemy is really about to be on your head because he's threatened by your anointing. So just know, and don't be discouraged when the attacks come. Just know it, it's a part of the journey. Sorry. All right. So this is just why continued. So it says the breastplate of righteousness helps us to guard or shield our heart. So the heart really stood out to me on this. It's so important that we guard or shield our heart. We need to keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. And that's found in Proverbs 4.23. So when we break down the scripture, keep means we should maintain or care. 
Um, diligence means careful or persistent work. So we should be maintaining our heart, caring for our heart, making sure we protect what we allow to come in our heart, protecting what we watch, protecting what we meditate on, protecting what we listen to, protecting what we engage in. Even um, I find myself at work sometimes engaging or laughing at stuff. I really shouldn't be laughing at when I really think about it because I don't want to meditate on that stuff in my heart later. But I'm like, that was a really carnal joke that I laughed about, that I laughed for real, like tears in my eyes. That was so carnal. So that's something I know I need to work on. Don't engage in carnal jokes either. Like it may seem harmless, but at the end of the day, <laughs> it, it really isn't. Um, the next scripture, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, bring it forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart, bring it forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Luke 6, 45. What are we bringing forth? It's a question to just ponder on. Are you bringing forth that that is good? Or are you bringing forth evil stuff? So out of your heart, your mouth speaketh. That is so true. Um, a lot of times you may hear people say, oh, I didn't mean what I said. I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, you did. It was in your heart where you would have never said it. So that's why it's important to do um, daily heart checks. That's why I put the scripture, Psalms 51.10, creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. So that's a good daily scripture affirmation just to say every single day, Lord, creating me a clean heart, oh God, renew a right spirit within me. People are going to try you. People are going to talk crazy. But just ask God, God, give me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Somebody's going to try it today. But I want to be suited up. I want to have my uh, piece of armor on so that I'm ready to respond the way that you will respond. I'm ready to treat them the way you would treat them because I did a daily heart fix. Um, just a little joke, or not really a joke, but something uh, Michael and I was talking about earlier. Like some carnal people in the family, like if they drink and get drunk, they may say, he sure told the truth because he was drunk and start, you know, spewing out all this information or about somebody else. But honestly, no, that's just a fleshly view, but that was already in his heart or her heart. The alcohol just brought it out at that moment, but he already, he or she already had that in their heart. So we need to make sure we are truly doing daily heart checks and we're guarding our heart above all else. Um, any questions so far from these slides? All right. And we're going to move on to the heart attack of the spear. Hey. And so uh, here are the heart uh, slash, uh, I put that slash there, slash uh, attack of the spear uh, is, is very unique in its way. And I say that because back in the early times, uh, we know when they went to battle and for war, uh, they use uh, bow and arrows. Of course, we know they use spears where you can get a close attack. Uh, you can get the job done, swords and things like that. But uh, the, the spear is very interesting. And so uh, the scripture here we have forth uh, is Romans chapter 13, verse 12. And it's in connection uh, with uh, Ephesians chapter 6. And, then, and of course, this here, the book of Romans, deals with uh, just basic Christian principles, of course, from uh, Paul and his writings. But it's, very, it's a very powerful uh, scripture here. And so I'll read it here. It says, uh, the night is far spent, uh, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And you see in quotations is the right living. And I think that, uh, you know, we, we kind of get uh, misdirected uh, a little bit. And so we got to understand uh, that the word put on is, talks about being endued. Uh, it's put, putting on the garment. And, 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 and just a little extension on it, uh, the word that came up <laughs> that was interesting was the word invest. Okay, and so when I saw the word invest, I was like, well, this here, this word here, I have never seen it in this context, but invest. And, and so I think the question that we need to ask ourselves is, what are we investing in in our time as far as our garment? Like, are we, are we vesting our time, investing our time into uh, the word of God? 
or what are we doing? And so, and so we got to understand that in order for this uh, armor to be attached, uh, we need to invest our time in what the word of God. And so uh, when I saw that and I saw that I was excited about that because I never had seen it that way. But, um, and I just talk about uh, uh, very quickly, the important, uh, the important organs to consider are the lungs and the heart. And so, uh, you know, in battle, of course, you know, if, if, if you throw in the spear and you, you hit that hard, you hit those lungs, uh, it cuts off your breathing. I mean, <laughs> you, I mean you're headed for death. Uh, you hit the heart, uh, of course, uh, you're headed for death as well. And so um, the, 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 the next one here is uh, the, treacherous, the treacherous deadly spear edge is what I like to call it. I like to call it that. Uh, because uh, when we are vulnerable and when we don't intend to put on the armor, uh, we don't invest the time that we have into our armor, uh, into the word of God, so no armor is applied. And so what we deal here is the word unfaithfulness can be attached to the end of the arrow bow, the arrow, or the end of the spear. Uh, you have faithless can be attached, uh, deception, uh, betrayal, pride, lust, ETC. Uh, these things are attached to it. So in, in the fight with against the battle, in the battle with the enemy, no armor is applied. And so he's like, I got you. I'm going to go ahead and stick you with this spear, this spearhead, spear, hey, I'm just going to hit you right in the heart. Unfaithfulness is in your heart now. So let me hit you with a little bit of faithless. You don't have any faith. You're faithless now. You've lost faith in God. You're faithless. You don't have any faith. And so he hits you with that. And matter of fact, I'll hit you with a little deception, just a little bit, you know. And so when we get hit with these things without being having the light applied to us, uh, you know, death can come upon us. And, and next thing you know, we don't have any armor on and we're just out there. So we're out there to die without investing the certain time that we need. Uh, into the word of God, investment, invest in our time. What are we investing in? Investing in, uh, you, when you invest in things, you expect to get something in return. You, you, you pray about it, can I get something in return? And so uh, not investing in the word of God, uh, no return on anything, you're just out there. And so uh, no covering, no armor, death, the spear, it hits, it hits hard. You're done, you're dead, it's over. So we want to invest our time into the word of God. And so uh, very powerful and it could be deadly. Uh, it's deadly and it kills. And so uh, uh, essentially in our next slide here is essentially it's putting on Christ. We know this Romans 13 and 13. I put the NLT New Living Translation up there uh, just to give you, uh, I think it's a really good translation. I read and study from it. Uh, you might not like it, but I like it. But uh, it says, because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see and understanding that our lives are, are, are on display. Uh, we we want to live this right living uh, with the initially with applying God's word to our lives. It helps us to grow and it helps us to look like he looks. And so here it says, uh, don't participate in the darkness of wild parties, come on, and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and in moral living or in quarreling when that's just a bunch of talking back and forth, just a hatred talk pretty much and jealousy. Uh, verse 14, uh, says, instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. And, no, and, and I think, think another translation was like, uh, don't make provisions for the flesh, uh, you know, fulfilling a lust. And, um, and so we know that the flesh equals self-desire. And so that is something that we don't want. And uh, in our last scripture here, is Job 29 and 14. I just went back to Old Testament here because it makes sense. And the reason why is because I want us to see uh, what uh, the story of Job, we knew, we know about the story. We know about uh, how he, uh, you know, he lost everything uh, at the beginning, you know, family members and things like that, uh, money, whatever you have it, those things, he lost those things. And we understand that uh, he had uh, he had three friends that come about in his life 
and they were supposed to come and comfort him and stuff, which they did. They came and comforted, comforted him, him, and the scripture talked about that. And when they came and comforted him, of course, they was going to, you know, they asked a question. They like, man, you know, they looking around like, dude, listen, you don't have anything at all. Like, you don't have nothing, dude. You must be in sin for real. Anyway, I mean, they, they really looked at his stuff. And so, uh, anyway, I put this scripture here because this is uh, a scripture from Job's defense. Uh, against going back and forth uh, with with his friends and things like that. Uh, and, and it says here, it says, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. Of course, we know turban covers our head, but we're initially dealing with the breast. But understand that righteousness here, uh, of course, is being justified, uh, the innocence and things like that. But it was another word that was connected to it and the word was forensic. And we, we both, we all heard of forensic scientists and things like that. And when I sing forensic, I'm like, well, you know, forensic scientists and forensics, uh, they are looking over every single thing uh, to try to get to, a, to an end, uh, uh, to bring this thing to a close, uh, uh, a crime investigation or things like that. And I'm thinking, well, man, I'm, well, how, how can I do this? I mean, become a forensic at putting on righteousness. Like I started thinking of that and I was like, man, that has become some deep, detailed stuff uh, to check out in my life. Uh, of putting on this thing. And it's, and I looked at Job and I was like, he put it on. Yeah, he had a different kind of attitude and things like that. But he was beat up pretty badly uh, with boils and things like that. And, and it talks about how his friends, when they saw him, they didn't even recognize him. And I believe they didn't recognize him because he was so messed up because Satan had caused all this to come over his life. Uh, just very, very brief, briefly scanning over it. And I was just like, well, you know, this is, this is crazy, but understand that he he said, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. You know, it clothed him and, and my justice, my justice is my verdict. His verdict from God uh, was like a robe and a turban to cover him. And so I, I, I thought that was pretty powerful. Uh, the verdict, the actual, uh, you know, the, the actual end to his, his, his thing, you know, to his, uh, you know, the verdict of what they said for him. He knew that, hey, <laughs> I know I've been through all this. I, I know what's going to happen. And so I believe it's, uh, I think it's uh, Job chapter 42 and 10, I believe. Uh, it just talks about the ending to it, what happened. And it talks about, heck man, I might have it on here. Um, it just talked about briefly, like how the Lord restored him and restored him two times more. <laughs> Everything he went through, he, he, he had it restored to him twice. Uh, he died, you know, about 140, 140 years old. But I think that what we could take during this time, even with COVID on, on hand and things like that, and even when Job had all that handled and had on his life, that he was able to stand. And I think that is very powerful through everything he went through, adversity on his life, wife telling him to curse God. And he's like, curse God, you know. Uh, I mean, what, we, we supposed to take the goodness of God and not accept adversity? Adversity is going to come. Tough times and circumstances are going to come. Times now have come. I mean, they are not the greatest at all. But we got to understand that we have to stand. Job stood and he never wavered from God at all. He stayed there and and God preserved him through that. And so my word is preserve. And so I just believe that the Lord will preserve us and we're able to stand at the end of this, no matter how it turns out. And so I found that scripture to be very powerful um, and, it, and, it, and it really helped. And so um, I believe this is the end of my, my slide, but um, any questions, comments or Okay. So, so I put that scripture up because I mean, as you were talking about the the breastplate, this kind of popped in my in my spirit, and so I just shared it out because um, you were talking about the the spear and talking about being deceived, and so 
Um, that is exactly what the devil does. He, it, it brings about deception. Uh, and so those that are perish, I mean, yes, yeah, unrighteousness, but they're deceived, but it's a reason why. And it's, it goes back to that breastplate because they did not receive the love. And so, so their heart wasn't in this thing, you know, a, a love for the truth. Like we really got to love this, not just know it or, you know, just follow it just to be following it. But because that's why people that follow the law, but they don't love the truth. They don't love Jesus. You know, he's the way, the truth and the life. And they just following the law, the Pharisees, you keep the letter, but, but you have no relationship with the word. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because you don't have a love for the truth that you might really be saved and not self-righteous. So I just thought that um, it just kind of stuck out in my spirit. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> well, we are off. I didn't click. I didn't go to the next slide. Uh -oh. Did you want to click on your thing? No, I was oh. just going to show them. Oh. All right, so actually the last slide just says um, where to go. It's called www.kahoot.com. I'll put it up again. So it's just a short quiz, five questions. And you can see here, so if you go here, www.kahoot.com, then I'll pull it up and there will be a pin number for you to join. So they were all on the same screen. Just give me a thumbs up when everyone has this site, then I'll move on. All right, so it is gonna load and you will put in the pin number that comes at the top. I don't know how to get on. <laughs> Go to Kahoot.com. I knew that was the case. Go to Kahoot.com on your phone. Oh, I knew that oh, was the case. Oh, I was like, man, where are you going? I'm not here with him. Bless his heart. I thought y'all was doing something else. <laughs> Go to Kahoot.com on your phone, babe, and hit play, and then put in the pin number. Can't <laughs>
eight people got that correct. Nice. Mrs. Campbell is in the lead, 853 points. With Elijah, second place. You got to answer first to get in the lead. No, you have got it's quick. Yeah, you do quickly. Yeah, that's true. All right, which scripture says, "Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times." Two got that right with Psalms 106 and 3. All right, we now have Kayla in the lead. 1,288 points. Mrs. Campbell in second. According to Romans 13, 12, what must we cast off to put on the armor of light? Yes, works of darkness. Eight people got that correct. Sam Johnson is now in the lead with Pastor in second place. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Said I'm coming. That's so funny. Job 29.14, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a blank. Treacherous, deadly spear edge includes unfaithfulness, faithless, betrayal, pride, and lust, and blank. You got quiet. We can't hear you. I think your sound went down or something. It's a little low, but we can hear. Mm. Oh, uh, maybe it's connected to the speaker. Good. 
Yeah, we can't we can't hear y'all. Um, it's just real faint. Yeah, just real faint. Well, we're glad it happened at the very end. Yeah. So, so that was good. We got we got some good teaching. You you challenged us tonight, man. I love. I, man, all right. I was really trying to win too. Sister Kimmy got me. Nah. <laughs> nah, that was good. I mean, I think the kids had a great time too, um, and we all learning. So I appreciate you all for jumping on tonight. We got, y'all better enjoy this quick teaching. Oh. <laughs> hey, Brennan. <laughs> but that's good. Well, I'm good. I'm not gonna hold this up. Remember, just be prayerful about everything we talked about. Um, prayer call tomorrow night, y'all. Let's get on prayer. Let's get on a prayer call. We only be on there like 10, 15 minutes. Prayer call. Yeah, so that's tomorrow night, 1030. Um, let's have a great time and pray and uh, thank the Lord for this lesson tonight. Let's guard our hearts. And I'm good. I'm good. Um, Where's my, is Franchise on here? I, I missed him last week. Uh, so, yeah, I, need, I need brother Franchise. <laughs> <laughs> what up, bro? Man, you already know, man. We, we need that anointed, that anointed prayer. <laughs> <laughs> hold on hold on but before you pray before you pray um i'm gonna put in a group text but i need all the young all young fellas to text brother josh your phone number your cell number because he's going to be doing something with the uh young boys like keeping up with them and checking in with them and um going out doing activities whatever but we're gonna we're gonna wrap these young fellas up and and, and brother franchise is gonna lead that charge for us so we gotta make sure we get them numbers to him so he has something to work with man sunday i saw like 50 kids running around looking just i was like man we got a whole bunch of babies here and they all weren't even there <laughs> So, so yeah, you're gonna have to get you some teen assistance or something, but we're gonna work it out. But they need, they need, I mean, they're gonna work through that. And so just make sure we get him they number. So um, and that that's it, man. Go ahead, brother franchise, man. <laughs> you're not on mute. Uh Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for blessing us to see another beautiful day, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing and what you've done and what you will do, Lord. We know that you are able, Lord. And we just want to thank you for your teaching today, Lord. And just continue to guide us, Lord. Touch our minds, our bodies, our hearts, God. And we just thank you, Lord. And we give you all the glory, honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, man. Amen. Love you all, man. Be Good night. Good night. All right, franchise. Who is franchise? <laughs> 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 Who is that? <laughs> he must not have a haircut, so that's why he he won't put his. No, I'm in. Hold on, I'm in the dark. I'm uh, oh, no, I'm Ah, in okay. The dark. I'm about to say. <laughs> but Josh, uh, yeah. where's he at? I'm I'm at work, so that's why I couldn't I couldn't have the camera on. Oh, he good. Yeah. He good. All right, good stuff, man. <laughs> Enjoy your night, man. Go, go, catch, go catch the game. Is there All right, game? man. Yeah, 830. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I'm about to get yeah. All right, Chan, I'll see you in a little bit. I'm about to leave out of here. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo.